There are some characters in horror that stick with us because they scare us half to death. There are others that are just so hilariously over the top that you just can't forget them. But there are others that are so relatable that you immediately feel a kinship to them, and they stick with you for years to come. One of those characters is Billy Peltzer from the eternal classic, and yes, it is a Christmas movie, Gremlins. Billy was played by actor Zach Galligan, who brought to Billy a kind-heartedness and realness that all the kids and teenagers who came in droves to see Gremlins believed. He loved his dog, he loved his family, his friends, and just like an entire generation, he loved Gizmo. Gremlins was the first big role for Zach, and that's one heck of a way to start. And well, Gremlins and its legacy sees no sign of stopping. So this holiday season, we're taking a look at one of the stars of the 80s' biggest monster hits, a little family comedy called Gremlins, on this episode of What the Fuck Happened to This Horror Celebrity. We're shedding some bright light on Zach Galligan. I want to thank you guys for watching Where in the Horror Are They Now? And ask that if you enjoy our shows, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and click on the bell so you can be notified each time a new video goes up. And now, back to the show. Zach Galligan was born in New York City on Valentine's Day in 1964. His on-screen career began with a blockbuster. His first major role was Billy, the young protagonist at the heart of Gremlins. You couldn't get much bigger than the little monster film. Produced by Steven Spielberg, written by Chris Columbus, and directed by Joe Dante, Gremlins had some more well-known names at the time circling for the part. Emilio Estevez and Judd Nelson, soon to be riding high on The Breakfast Club, were both being considered, but Spielberg saw something there when Galligan auditioned with co-star Phoebe Cates. There had been a bit of hesitation even with Cates being cast as the studio was worried about her having been in less than friendly family fair with Fast Times at Ridgemont High, but the filmmakers wanted her on board. The duo had immediate chemistry, and Spielberg decided that Zack was the perfect Billy, stating that he pretty much looked like he was already in love with Phoebe when they read their scene. While many might have seen it as a risky move, Spielberg had faith in the young actor, and it paid off. Gremlins became one of the biggest movies in 1984. Warner Brothers released the film six months early, feeling it was the best contender against another Spielberg-produced, and also directed, film, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. This is why you've got a Christmas time flick dropping in June. While it was a little strange to see in the dead of summer, it didn't keep audiences away. Gremlins became a mega hit, raking in over $200 million on a budget of 11 and a merchandising behemoth with life-size figures, plushies, toys, video games, and a breakfast cereal. That summer also marked another moment in the history of cinema, with Spielberg's dual summer hits helping to inspire the creation of the PG-13 rating. Gremlins, with its rather violent tendencies as well as gory bits, rest in peace Gremlin in a blender, and Mola Ram's heart ripping, were both, if you can believe it, PG, and managed to get through with that rating. Needless to say, parents weren't too happy about their kids seeing this without a warning, so PG-13 was born. Gremlins has some obviously intense moments, and one scene in particular with Galligan and Cates is the scene where she talks about her father dying, trying to be Santa Claus, and that's why she hates Christmas. In a film with murderous little green monsters, it's a particularly unexpectedly dark scene, and the two young actors deliver some moving performances. Galligan's Billy is just as enchanted with the Mogwai as any of us would be, and you're rooting him on as he does his best against some impossible odds. He also showed a different sort of hero, a little bit geeky and a little awkward with his heart on his sleeve. Zack followed up Gremlins that same year with the science fiction film Nothing Lasts Forever, which also co-starred SNL alumni Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd and was produced by Lauren Michaels. The film was written and directed by SNL scribe Tom Schiller. Zack was the lead character named Adam, who goes through some bizarre realizations and adventures while looking to connect to his true love. Nothing Lasts Forever has had just about as much of a bizarre journey. The movie never went to cinemas in the US for a regular release, has only been shown a few times in Europe and some screenings in the States. It's also never been released on DVD. The first time it was shown on television was in 2015 as part of Turner Classic Movies' TCM Underground. It was also leaked onto YouTube. Zack followed Gremlins and Nothing Lasts Forever with some TV work, and then in 1988 was cast as the lead hero in the Anthony Hickox film Waxwork. Waxwork is one of my favorite 80s horror movies, and holds a special place in the heart of many of us who grew up watching Vestron home video releases back in the day. The film co-starred Deborah Foreman, Dana Ashbrook, Patrick McNee, and David Warner, and was sort of a monster mashup movie. Try saying that five times fast. 
which took place in a wax museum where each of the displays requires a victim to bring the evil to life. Galligan plays Mark, a college student with who his group of friends discovered the wax work and go through it as a fun time but wind up being swept into, quite literally, the displays. The movie is a fun-filled love letter to classic monsters and horror tales, with Galligan's Mark becoming a hero and fighter against evil. In 1990, Galligan was reunited with his scaly and furry co-stars in Gremlins 2 The New Batch, which was really Joe Dante Unleashed. The film was filled with in-jokes, satire, and was meta before that was even a theme. The film had a bigger budget, and Dante was allowed full creative control of the film, which featured returning actors along with Zack from the original movie, such as genre legend Dick Miller. It would also feature classic horror actor Christopher Lee, and would parody a certain New York real estate mogul with a character named Clamp. Gremlins 2 The New Batch would see various new forms of gremlins, with the first ever specifically female gremlin, a terrifying spider gremlin, and the intelligent brain gremlin voiced by actor Tony Randall. While it did have a bigger budget than the first film, Gremlins 2 did not come anywhere near the box office of the first film upon release, not even making its $50 million budget back. It has since though become a fan favorite, with new merchandise inspired by the movie being released even today. In 1992, Zack returned to the waxwork, with Waxwork 2 through the portal of time. Zack was the only original on-screen actor from the first film. Patrick McNee recorded an audio-only role as Sir Wilford returned as a raven. Waxwork 2 starts right after the first movie ends, with the disembodied hand that survived the destruction of the waxwork following Sarah home and killing her stepfather. Sarah is accused of the crime, and it is up to Galligan's Mark to find a way to prove her innocence. This leads to the discovery of a magical compass which allows the user to travel through different dimensions. These dimensions, much like the waxwork, take the form of famous stories slash films, like Frankenstein, Night of the Living Dead, and Nosferatu. The movie was again written and directed by Anthony Hickox, and is another fun and fantastic film. Galligan gets to travel through some great set pieces, and is joined by other familiar faces like Bruce Campbell, Maxwell Caulfield, and Drew Barrymore. Zack would do a brief but memorable cameo appearance in Hickox's sequel to Warlock, Warlock the Armageddon, the following year. Also in 1992, Zack would star opposite Hollywood legend Donald O'Connor in a puppet-centric episode of Tales from the Crypt called Strung Along. Let's just say it doesn't end well for Zack. In 1994, Galligan co-starred in the direct-to-video third entry in the Cyborg series, Cyborg 3 The Recycler, alongside Malcolm McDowell and Richard Lynch, as an engineer trying to help a pregnant cyborg escape from the villains out to capture her. In 1997, Zack joined Ashley Lawrence of Hellraiser fame for the slasher Cupid, Ironic, as he was born on Valentine's Day. In the film, Galligan is Eric, the brother to Mary Crosby's Dana. The two have a very close relationship, as well as enjoy murdering the women that Eric has an interest in, or who have an interest in Eric. Ashley Lawrence plays the object of Eric's affection. Zack would guest star in various TV series throughout the 90s, such as Star Trek Voyager and The Net. He'd also star in many independent direct-to-video films, a number of them falling into the genre of horror, such as Infested, a mix of nature insect horror with a bit of zombie and body snatcher thrown in. There was also Night Beast in 2009, which was a Bigfoot film with a supernatural bent. In 2000, Zack starred in the comic book-inspired film G-Men from Hell, based on on the Mike Allred series of the same name, and directed by Nick Cage's brother Christopher Coppola. It would co-star William Forsyth and Bobcat Goldthwait. Much like the title suggests, it deals with FBI agents in a deal with the devil to solve their own murders. In 2013, Zack joined writer-director-producer Adam Green's fan-favorite series of films in Hatchet 3, as Sheriff Fowler alongside genre vets Caroline Williams, Kane Hodder, and Danielle Harris. In 2021, Zack rejoined Gizmo for a lovable Mountain Dew Zero Sugar ad that shows an older Billy and a slightly graying Gizmo sharing a soda, which of course Gizmo promptly spills all over himself. Billy's goth daughter enters the room with what appears to be a mohawk mogwai on her shoulder, both of them rolling their eyes as Gizmo starts popping fur balls off his back. This, of course, only added more fuel to the desire for a Gremlins 3 follow-up, something that's been rumored about and spoken about for a while now. Zach Galligan himself has championed a third entry and is active on social media, posting a number of Gremlins-centric posts and also joining fans at conventions across the country throughout the year. Galligan and Chris Columbus have both stated that Gremlins 3 is being worked on, and as recently as last year, it was said that when the film was made, it would not have CGI Gremlins or Mogwai, but would use the old-school puppet method the fans all love. 
While the fans wait for Zack to reprise the role of Billy again, Galligan is still working and still going strong as part of the genre. Some upcoming projects for Zack include Shook, which sees Galligan starring alongside Nightmare on Elm Street alum Lisa Wilcox. The film follows a group of friends who accidentally kill one of their classmates and sees them haunted by the act years later. Slay Utterly is a modern take on the true axe killings that took place in Iowa in 1912, written and directed by Stuart Wallen. The film will see Zack alongside Bill Oberst Jr. and Lynn Lowry. Zack Galligan's a familiar face to horror fans and those of us who've grown up with him over the years and he continues to be a fan favorite no matter the time of year. But I think we'll always have a special spot during the holidays for Zack and his friends, furry or otherwise. Just be sure to keep them away from the water.